Chapter 7 is full of definitions, as was chapter 6. Let's talk through some of them. Uh, first off, there's three types of prophet, and to talk about them, we need to define all sorts of terms, some of which we've talked about already, some of which will be new in this screencast. Uh, so just the picture, let me explain this picture, these pictures. This is my wife, Lisa, who um, has long had a dream of owning and operating a, a coffee shop bakery. And uh, I always say, oh, okay, well, let's write up the business plan. And, you know, the, con the conversation ends there, uh, mercifully for me. Um, anyway, I'm going to use this example of a coffee shop we're thinking about starting as, as I explain three types of profit. So let's first talk about accounting profit. And uh, to do that, we need to add some terms here. Uh, explicit benefits. The, the book doesn't focus on explicit benefits, but it's, it's important the way I, I think about things and the way you will come to think about things. Explicit benefits are, are benef benefits that are in money. So I'll just use the word monetized benefits. And, you, you know, here we've been talking about the firm's total revenue. And that's really when we talk about uh, explicit benefits. Usually it's all, well, I can't think of a case where it's not going to be just total revenue. The, the price of a firm's product times the quantity sold. We're making an, a simplifying assumption that each firm sells one thing. Obviously, a bakery would sell a lot of different types of scones and croissants and muffins and coffee, etc. But we're just going to simplify. Total revenues, that's the money benefit of running a business of any sort. Explicit costs are all um, money paid out. And we talked at some length about this last class. Uh, so, so money paid out would be you know, if she has to pay a landlord for the building, that would, her rent, she'd have to pay it out in money. Any wages she'd have to pay to help, that would be paid in money. Um, those, those are explicit. Um, you know, the electricity to turn on the lights, turn on the ovens, the insurance, whatever. All, all expenses that she incurs that involve transferring money from her bank account to another, those are explicit costs. And then Accounting profit are, are simply the explicit benefits, which is total revenue, minus the explicit costs, which are all these monetized expenses. The difference in this definition from the book is that the, the book just calls the explicit benefits total revenue, but I, I'm going to have a an example where there's some implicit benefits too, which are very common. And uh, so we want a framework that can handle those too. That's why my definition's a little different. So my, in my example, let's suppose that in Lisa's coffee shop, she uh, would get total revenues of 100,000, just keeping it simple, uh, dollars per year. And at her total costs, total explicit costs, Let's say those add up to 80000 per year. The accounting profit would then equal 100000 minus 80000 which would equal... 20,000 per year. No, not bad from a little, uh, for operating a little coffee shop, right? Well, uh, maybe let's think again. And to do, to think again and think a little more carefully, uh, let's, let's make, let's add some more definitions because, you know, that's always. So let's, let's talk about economic profit, which are always going to be the profit concepts well, the, the, it's going to be the profit concept that we use throughout our study of economics. And it's different from accounting profit. And when you read about profits in the business pages of the newspaper, typically they're reporting accounting profits. But when you look at how firms respond to that news, you see that firms are making decisions based on 
uh, economic profit. All right, so we need to define some things. One is the, the implicit benefits. These are real benefits that don't involve a money transfer. So the best things in life are free. Those best things are, are providing implicit benefits. Um, they're, they're not really free, as we know, um, but, but um, they might not involve any monetary transfer. Uh, so, so for in Lisa's case, I'm going to give an example where her next best alternative is, is managing a residential care facility um, for the adult mentally ill. That was her, her job um, when she was in the workforce full time. Um, Anyway, let's say, I'm, I'm going to say that she would really much rather bake and, and make coffee and chat with people than, than run that care facility. And so she, that's going to provide some happiness that, you know, she'd be willing to pay, take a smaller salary in order to do that job. Well, that, that means she has an implicit benefit. All right, then there are implicit costs we talked about a lot uh, in class already. Um, implicit costs include, uh, importantly, the opportunity cost of her time. And in general, it's the un opportunity cost of the entrepreneur. I always have trouble uh, spelling this, so I probably spelled it wrong. Um, anyway, so when Lisa leaves this job as, as a residential care facility manager to start a coffee shop, she gives up her salary at, at this other job and then lives off the residual, what's left over after she takes in the revenue and pays off her costs and doesn't necessarily pay herself a salary. So, but she's given up a salary. It, she doesn't pay out any money to herself, but this, this lost salary when she left one job to start the business, that's a real important opportunity cost. Another one that, that's typical for, for firms of all types is um, the opportunity cost of invested resources. And so if Lisa has put in some of her own money into this coffee shop, that well that money could be earning earning a rate of return elsewhere and, and she gives that up. So that's a real important implicit cost. Just the earnings on the money, not not the whole sum. And then economic profit is simply defined as all benefits, both explicit and implicit, minus all costs, both explicit and implicit. Oops, excuse me. Um, I just dropped my little pen on the screen. Uh, and so let's, let's talk through this example. Let's suppose that Lisa would, would give up $5,000 a year to make coffee and bake goods rather than run this care facility. So, um, and, and that's it. Let's, let's say that implicit benefits equal uh, 5000 per year. And then let's say the, the implicit costs Let's say there's two. The, the opportunity cost of her time, let's say she made $35,000 a year as this residential care facility manager. And let's say she's got $100,000 invested in her building. She had to buy some ovens and renovate, etc. And let's suppose that $100,000, let us say the interest rate is 5% a year. In that case, that, that $100,000 at 5% would have returned $5,000 a year in investment earnings that she's given up to put it into her business. So now when we go to calculate economic profit, and again, this is always the profit concept we're going to be using in this course, we have to add the $5,000 a year in implicit benefits to her earnings. So her total benefits are 105000 And then once we add 40000 to her costs, the 
she has implicit costs of 35 and 5, so a total of 40. Um, she had $80,000 of, of explicit costs. When we add all those up, that's 120000 in uh, total costs. And remember, we want to keep track of all costs. And then finally, when we do that calculation, we, when we calculate economic profits, which, which are the, the, the important concept to guide decisions, um, she loses 15000 by doing this. And so that's a very different story than we got from looking at accounting profit. And one last quick one. A normal rate of return is, is one we use to describe the rate of return that investors in a company expect. So for a publicly traded company, let's say Nike is worth, I, I don't know how, what they're worth, but let's say they're a billion dollars. So, so the sum of all the stock in Nike is a billion dollars. Well, those investors could have had their money elsewhere, but they had it in Nike. And other businesses with Nike's risk profile, let's say, return 8% a year. Well, then those investors have given up 8% a year to have their money in Nike. And, and that, that normal rate of return, that's that 8%, the, the rate of return that similar businesses would, would tend to earn, the, the returns to capital that would normally be earned, um, we call that a normal rate of profit, normal rate of return. And that's a very important opportunity cost that, that firms have to cover. So when, when the Oregonian reports that Nike made 8% a year, you know, we don't see big changes at Nike. We see, okay, they're, they're satisfied. They're not dancing in the streets. Um, and that's because, well, Phil Knight's probably not a great dancer, but, but uh, it's also because they're just essentially breaking even because they, they've offered their investors just the same rate of return as they would have earned elsewhere. If there's a 3% profit, well, then they're laying off people and closing divisions because that's, that's an economic loss. If it's 20%, well, that's a really good year, and, and even Phil Knight might dance in the street or, or give another $50 million to U of O or the OHSU or someplace. Made with DoodleCast Pro.